Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevins Welder. Over the years, we have had many people ask us about the two witnesses in Revelation 11. When you read 11, verse 3 through 6, for instance, you see these two witnesses. They prophesy a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days, which is the 42 months that is mentioned in verse 2, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. They have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, people read this, and of course, those two witnesses right there in Revelation 11 are not identified by name. So people wonder who they are and conjecture, who are these guys? Many people believe that the two witnesses in Revelation 11 are Enoch and Elijah because they are the only two who were raptured alive in the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 24 we find that Enoch was, what, 365 years old? And he walked with God in verse 24, and he was not, for God took him. Genesis 5, 24. God took him. He was translated. That is, he was taken from earth, and he was taken to heaven with the Lord. In Second Kings chapter 2, Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11, we see that Elijah was taken up. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11, he was taken up or went up by a whirlwind into heaven right when Elisha was there. Elisha was separated from him by a chariot of fire and horses of fire. But Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So people say, well, see, those are the two guys from the Old Testament. That would be the witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 because neither one of them died. However, the belief that Enoch and Elijah are the two witnesses is primarily based on and supported by Hebrews 9.27, that part of the verse which says, it is appointed unto men once to die. They say, well, since these two men didn't die in the Old Testament, they must be the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. And they also say that since Moses had already died once in the Old Testament, the thought was that he couldn't come back and die again in the tribulation. Now, you have to remember, Hebrews 9.27 is not a doctrinal statement on death. And you know that because Lazarus died twice, Eutychus died twice, Dorcas died twice, the widow of Nain's son died twice, and that's just to name a few. So Moses easily could have been uh, died, you know, in the Old Testament, and then brought back to life to die again in the tribulation. That's that's not uh, contrary to any doctrine of the Bible. Now the evidence for the two witnesses being Moses and Elijah is compelling evidence. Here are the reasons. First of all, they were both on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus Christ. Turn to Matthew chapter 17. In Matthew chapter 17, in verses 1 through 5, After six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, 
and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if thou wilt let us make th here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Now you say, well, how in the world could Moses be there with Elias on the Mount of Transfiguration if he died back in the Old Testament? Well, when we get to that passage in Deuteronomy chapter 34, you're going to find out that he that the Lord buried him, but no man knoweth of, of his sepulcher unto this day. And the reason is, the reason is, according to Jude 9, Jude 9, you know what happened? Michael, the archangel, came down here and took that body. Jude 9 says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. And what happened is Michael came and got that body. And that's why he is able to appear with the Lord Jesus Christ at the Mount of Transfiguration and with Elijah at the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17. All right, another thing about Moses and Elijah. Not only were they both on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, they were the last two men mentioned in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Malachi chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Horeb is Mount Sinai. For all Israel with the statutes and judgments, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, you know what the context of Malachi chapter 4 is? It's the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, verse 1 says, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Verse 2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. The context is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the two men mentioned in that context are Moses and Elijah. All right, here's another thing about Moses and Elijah. They were both taken to heaven from the same place. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34, and when Moses died, um, the Lord is the one that buried him. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 34 and look at verse 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab. Well, the only two people standing there are God and Moses. He buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, but no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And the reason that they don't know of his sepulcher is, as you saw in Jude 9, Michael the archangel came and got that body out of there. Now, where is this? Well, this is, this is on the other side of the Jordan River from Jericho. Because, you know, after Joshua takes over, they cross the Jordan River right there from where uh, Moses died. They cross the Jordan River, go into Gilgal, have the circumcision, the Passover, and the first city they attack is Jericho, right? Well, then go to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, and in 2 Kings chapter 2, what's happening? Elijah and Elisha are together, and they start... Um, from Gilgal in Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1. They go to Bethel in verse 2. And then they go to Jericho in verse 4 and 5. And from Jericho, they go down to the Jordan River. Look at uh, Second Kings chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. 
And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on, and fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they two stood by Jordan. Then Elijah wraps the mantle together, smites the waters, and they cross over on dry ground and come out on the other side. You know where they are? They're in the same place where Moses was when he died, where the children of Israel were before they crossed over the Jordan River to go back into Jericho. So they were both taken to heaven from the same place. All right, here's another thing about Moses and Elijah and why we say that Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11. They both fasted 40 days just like Jesus Christ did. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 2, we see that Jesus Christ fasted 40 days. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. The Bible says, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. That's Jesus Christ. Well, in Exodus chapter 24, in Exodus chapter 24, when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, we find that he was in the mountain with the Lord fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus chapter 24, verse 18. Exodus chapter 24, verse 18. Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount, and Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Now, he had to go back up there another time because he broke those Ten Commandments when he came down. He was so frustrated when Israel had made the, you know, when Israel had made the, uh, the idol, the golden calf. So Moses had to go back up there again and fast again. And when he did, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 34, verse 28, Exodus 34, 28, he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So he's fasting. Fasting. Now turn to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, after the big showdown at Carmel, when uh, Elijah had the, you know, the prophets of Baal come, and they were going to find out who the Lord really is. After that, then Elijah slew the prophets of Baal, and then he led Ahab back down to Jezreel when it started raining. And then in 1 Kings chapter 19, Jezebel sent word that she was going to kill Elijah. And then the Lord, uh, and, and, he got, and so Elijah got very depressed and spent that time under the juniper tree. The Lord fed him. And afterwards, the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 8, he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat. Forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. So that little bit that the Lord fed him while he was there under the juniper tree was sufficient to sustain him for forty days and forty nights. Of course, miraculously, the Lord sustained him. So Moses fasted forty days and forty nights. Elijah fasted forty days and forty nights. And Jesus Christ fasted forty days and forty nights. All very similar, all, all pointing to these two witnesses being Moses and Elijah. They were both on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. They're the last two men mentioned in the Old Testament in Malachi chapter 4 in the context of the second coming. They were both taken to heaven from the same place. They both fasted 40 days and 40 nights just like Jesus Christ. And then something else. They were both on Mount Sinai or Horeb, and that place is probably the same wilderness in which Jesus Christ was tempted. You see all these parallels. You, you get to thinking, undoubtedly, when, when Jesus Christ was led out into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, you, you would think, undoubtedly, that's the place where the Lord would send him, in the same place where these other men were. Look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 and look at verse 1. 
Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. In those days he did eat nothing, and when he when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So he's out in the wilderness, right? Well, let's go back to um, Exodus chapter 24, verse 16. Exodus chapter 24, and look at verse 16. This place where, where Moses was is the same place where Elijah was, and I believe, anyway, that that's where the, the, the Lord sent uh, Jesus to be tempted of the devil. Uh, Exodus chapter 24, look at verse 16. The Bible says, The glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. So he's on Mount Sinai. And as I said, the other name for Mount Sinai is Horeb. It's the same place. Then when you go to 1 Kings and look at chapter 19 and verse 8, which we've seen before. Notice now the location, the location where Elijah was. He arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat, 40 days and 40 nights, unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Same place, same place where Moses was. Here's another thing. During the tribulation in Revelation chapter 11, you see that the two witnesses can destroy men with fire. Look in Revelation chapter 11 at verse 5. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So when people challenge uh, Moses and Elijah, you know what they do? <laughs> they burn them. <laughs> And that's something that happened when Moses and Elijah were both here on the earth the first time. Turn to Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. You remember the problem with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, I suppose. Those are men that started drawing the congregation after themselves and away from Moses. That's not something that God appointed. And so Moses said about these men, if they die you know, a natural death then the Lord hath not sent me. He says in number 16, 29, if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing in the earth, open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. All right, that's Dathan and Abiram in their households. Korah, on the other hand, is gathered together with men, and they have 250 censers, and they're offering incense before the Lord. So for Dathan and Abiram, the earth opens her mouth and swallows them down into the pit. And for the other ones, Korah and his group, verse 35, number 16, verse 35, there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. So down they go <laughs> with fire for standing against Moses and against Aaron and against the Lord and trying to draw that congregation after themselves. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 1. 2 Kings chapter 1. In 2 Kings chapter 1, uh, the king sends to Elijah a captain of 50 with his 50 men. And they say to Elijah, you better come down because the king wants to see you. <laughs> Look at it in 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 10. Verse 9 for the context. So the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50, and he went up to him. And behold, he sat on the top of a hill, and he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king had said, Come down. And Elijah, in verse 10, answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God... Then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee in thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him in his fifty. And you know what? It happened again in verse 12. So it, it happened for Moses 
against Korah and those men that had offered that strange fire before the Lord, that incense before the Lord in number 16. It happened for Elijah when the king sent a captain of 50 with his 50 to make him come to the king. Both times they were able to call fire down from heaven and burn their enemies just like they will in Revelation chapter 11 verse 5. You know, another compelling reason why I believe the two witnesses are Moses and Elijah is that they both stood by the Lord on the earth. Zechariah chapter 4 talks about these olive trees. Zechariah chapter 4, what you got here is you've got a candlestick of gold. And then in Zechariah chapter 4, you have two olive trees by it. That's in verses 2 and 3. And so there's a whole prophecy concerning that. And then Zechariah answered the Lord in verse 12, Zechariah 4.12, and he said, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me, he said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Now watch it. Verse 14 then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Well, you know something? Moses stood by the Lord on the earth. And Elijah stood by the Lord on the earth. Turn to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. And look at verses 20. And 21, Exodus chapter 33, look at verses 20 and 21. And what do you have here? The Lord said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Exodus 33, 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff to the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. But he stood right there by the Lord. First Kings chapter 19. Look at the case for Elijah. First Kings chapter 19. And look at verse 11. The Lord said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Standing right there talking to the Lord. <laughs> it's amazing, amazing these similarities among um, Moses and Elijah. And in many cases, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let's look at one more thing. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 6, Moses and Elijah are going to have, the witnesses anyway, are going to have the power to stop rain on the earth. That's what the Bible says. Re Re Revelation 11, verse 6, These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. How long do they prophesy? Forty-two months. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. That's what Moses did in Egypt. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. That's what Moses did in Egypt. All right. Now in Exodus chapter 9. In Exodus chapter 9 verse 33. There's a great hailstorm. And there's fire in it. There's thunder in it. And there's rain. And the Bible says in Exodus 9:33, Moses went out from the city of Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord, and the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. He stopped it. In 1 Kings chapter 17, the, the whole problem with Elijah showing up, as far as Ahab was concerned, the same thing. He stopped the rain. And that's where the big showdown started with the worshipers of Baal and with Jezebel and with Ahab and the whole problem. First Kings chapter 17, verse 1, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And he stopped it. 
He stopped that rain. As a matter of fact, interestingly, turn to James chapter 5, verse 17. You'll find out exactly how long he stopped it. James chapter 5, verse 17. We know that he stopped the rain, but watch it. James 5, 17, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and the, he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. That's exactly how long he's going to stop the rain during the tribulation. During the days of their prophecy, 42 months, three and a half years, uh, what is that, 1,000? Uh, 240 days, is that what he said there in Revelation chapter 11? All those being exactly the period of time of the tribulation. 1,203 score days, 60 days, clothed in sackcloth. Revelation 11, verse 3. So you see from studying this evidence today how substantial the evidence is that Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses. And furthermore, you wouldn't want to make the second witness, Enoch, just because he didn't die in the Old Testament. You know why? Because Enoch is a perfect Old Testament type of a Christian in the church age who is alive at the rapture and who is taken to heaven without ever dying. You remember what Jesus Christ said to Martha when he, when he approached them about the about the death of Lazarus, he said, He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Never die. That's, that's Enoch, see? That's like Enoch. He is our type in the Old Testament. Uh, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We don't die. Those who have already died are corruptible. Those who have not died are mortal. And we, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty one says, shall be changed. So I believe that the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 are Moses and Elijah, not Enoch and Elijah. And I hope this Bible study has been helpful to you in your understanding of the Word of God. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com That's my, the number 3, bc.com If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, Come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Amen.